Hello everyone, welcome back to another remote sensing lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on radiometric errors. So in the previous video, we talked about this idea of terrain error, and hopefully we walked away with the understanding that terrain error is basically errors caused by changes in the slope of the Earth. Right, and we drew that whole diagram out where we talked about how as you change the angle or it, it increases or decreases the amount of reflected light that's actually being directed to the sensor, even though nothing else has changed. So hopefully that made sense. In this video, I want to talk about the idea of atmospheric error. And we've actually already talked about atmospheric error, but I don't think we necessarily described it in terms of an error. And so what I want to do in this video is I want to recap what we've already talked about, highlighting it as an error, and talk about some of the things that we can do to fix it. Okay, so let's go ahead and give ourselves some space here. Okay, and let's talk about atmospheric errors. Right. So way back in the first couple of modules, when we talked about the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter, we said that energy could be transmitted, reflected, or absorbed. And we used the example of a leaf or a truck. And then we talked about what's actually being measured at the sensor. And we said that the sensor was measuring radiation being reflected off of the object, being reflected off of the atmosphere, and being scattered around within the atmosphere that was getting to the sensor. So what I want to do is I want to really quickly just recap that drawing so that we're on this, so everyone's on the same page, right? So we had the Earth's surface, something like this, right? And we had this nice layer of atmosphere above the Earth's surface like this. We had our sensor, which was somewhere over here. Right, and we said that the sun was emitting energy, that that energy was hitting the Earth's surface. It was bouncing off, and it was hitting the sensor. Right, but we also said that there was energy that was coming out of the sun, that was hitting the top of the atmosphere, bouncing off, and hitting the sensor. And we said that there was energy that was coming, maybe it was most supposed to be over here, but it had been scattered around, bounced around, right? This is a really sloppy line on purpose, right? And that it, it also, actually, let's do that in a different color. Let's do that in red, right? We had some energy that did this and it was bounced around. It wasn't really meant to go there, but then it also managed to find its way to the sensor. Right, and we called this whole mess here irradiance, and we called what was being bounced off radiance, and we said that what was being measured by the sensor was a combination of surface radiance, atmospheric radiance, and atmospheric scattering. And I don't think we really explained this at the time, but the goal of remote sensing is really just to focus in on this. Right, this piece right here, this piece right here, this atmosphere or the surface radiance, right? This is the piece that we really wanted. Right, this is the piece that we keep thinking that we have. And so really all of this atmospheric stuff, right? This atmospheric radiance or atmospheric reflection, and then all the stuff that's scattered, right? That's all error. Ooh. Right, all these bits that aren't this process, that's all error. So we've already kind of talked about atmospheric error, right? So to put that into perspective, right, atmospheric error is basically everything that reaches the sensor
that shouldn't. All right, so that would be this bit here, this, the scattering and the stuff that's reflecting off the atmosphere, All right? But it's also everything that doesn't reach the center that should. And this is the part that we didn't talk about last time, right? And that's the idea that stuff's being reflected off the top to the satellite or to the sensor more generally, right? But you also have to realize the atmosphere isn't like one-way glass, right? It, it, it's it's going to reflect things both ways. So the energy is reflected off before it goes to the sensor, but what is allowed through bounces off the surface, right? It's also going to bounce off after it reaches the sensor, right? It works both ways. Some bounces off before and some bounces off after. And just like um, with scattering, right? The atmosphere is matter. Right, let's, 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 uh, let's put that in quotes, right? right the atmosphere is matter. Right? The atmosphere is matter. And we've talked about, right, energy interacts with matter. It can be reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. And so what we've... Ooh. Right? And so what we've covered already was the part that was reflected off the atmosphere, right? The part that was transmitted through the atmosphere and then reflected off the surface and then transmitted through the atmosphere again. Right now, what we have to account for is what's being reflected off the atmosphere again, and also, right, what's being absorbed, right? What's being absorbed, right? Some radiation, some electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere. right? Just like some radiation is absorbed by leaves for photosynthesis, right? The atmosphere at particular wavelength regions is actually a very strong absorber, right? What's in the atmosphere? Water vapor, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, right? All of those different molecules have their own preferences and their own interactions, right? Because they're matter, have their own interactions with electromagnetic radiation. So not only does the atmosphere reflect some, transmit some, reflect some again, transmit some again, but also at each of these intersections, it's also absorbing some. So that's the crux of atmospheric errors, right? It's the fact that it's reflecting some that should have hit the surface. It's reflecting some after it hit the surface. And it's also absorbing some at all of those stages. So it's, again, it's causing error in the data. When this right here is what we're expecting and hoping to measure. Okay. So I wanna repeat that one more time. Atmospheric errors are caused because the atmosphere is giving some more radiation than it should by bouncing some off the top. It's taking radiation away by reflecting some off the bottom and also by absorbing at both instances. So what can we do to address this? Okay, let's, let, let's, let's change gears for a second. What can we do to address atmospheric error? Right. And so there's really two approaches we can take. The first approach, the first thing we can do is what's called a relative atmospheric correction. OK. 
Okay. And so the way a relative atmospheric correction works is it essentially assumes that we can use something in the image to correct for atmospheric effects, right? So this uses information in the image to correct atmospheric impact. Now, there are a lot of different approaches that we can use. So the one that I want to focus on is probably the most simplistic to understand. And so this is going to be an example. Right, and an example of relative atmospheric correction, which uses information in the image to correct atmospheric impacts. Right, the example is what's called dark object subtraction. Dark object subtraction. And the way this works conceptually, you can imagine you have an image that has all different kinds of land surface features, right? It has buildings, it has urban areas, right? It has grass, it has trees. It has something, let's say, deep water, right? Deep water. And we know from our study of spectral response curves and spectral profiles, right, that water is a really good absorber of radiation across most of the wavelengths that we're concerned with in remote sensing. And so what we can do here in the case of dark object subtraction is we can literally just say, okay, water, the pixel values that are measured in water are going to be zero. Okay, the pixel values in water, we're going to make those zero. We're going to add or subtract whatever we have to do to make those pixel values zero. And then we're going to add or subtract whatever we had to do to make those zero to every other pixel in the image. The idea being that if we make water zero, then we've dealt with whatever atmospheric issues we had because water should have been zero. So we're going to make it zero and then we're just everything else the same. Okay, I'm not bothering to write that down because you don't necessarily need to know this. I just want to try and hopefully explain an example that we can pick one thing in the image that we know should be zero because we know the spectral properties of it make it zero, and then whatever changes we did to that set of pixels, we will apply to the whole image. And in theory, we will have dealt with any atmospheric issues that are occurring there, okay? That's relative atmospheric correction. And it's really easy because you only need one image to do it. The second thing we can do is what's called absolute. atmospheric correction. And what absolute atmospheric correction does is rather, rather than just relying on the pixel values in the image, it actually pulls in additional information from things like the solar geometry, atmospheric conditions, etc. So it uses secondary data, what we would call secondary data. So this is going to be things like weather conditions, solar location, so where the sun is, and how much energy the sun's producing, right? It's going to include all of that information into sophisticated models.
right, well outside the scope of this class, sophisticated models that calculate and model the impact of atmosphere on an image. All right, so hopefully you can see the difference here between relative atmospheric correction and absolute atmospheric correction, right? Relative is basically just, hey, I have an image. What can I use in this image to attempt to correct these issues of reflection and absorption from the atmosphere? Absolute atmospheric correction says, hey, we know what's going on in the atmosphere. We know what's going on with the sun, right? We have these other data sets out there. We can bring those into to a physical model that's going to actually calculate, right, how things are moving and dealing in the atmosphere to try to give us an, a more realistic and accurate um, assumption or calculation of how the atmosphere is affect, affecting that particular image. Okay. So what I want to wrap this, this video up talking about is, do we need to worry about atmospheric correction? Right. Do we even need to worry about relative or absolute or any of this stuff? And the answer, as in most things in science, is it depends. Right, it depends. Right, if you are only using one image, I'm writing the word one, I'm underlining it in red, circling it in blue, right? I'm writing a giant star over it, right? If you are only using one image, right? And all the data relates to that image. then you don't have to do atmospheric corrections. Okay, again, I want to recap that. You do not need to do atmospheric corrections if you only have one image, everything you're doing relates to that image, okay? Any other time, you need to use atmospheric corrections. If you're bringing in data sources from, another imp, from, from some other source, like say you're bringing in spectral response curves and you want to compare them to your image, you have to atmospherically correct. Say you're trying to compare two images, you have to atmospherically correct, right? But if you only have one image and everything you're doing is based on that image alone, you don't have to atmospherically correct. Hopefully this all made sense. I know this is a slightly longer video and I know some of it was hopefully a review, but hopefully you understand what's going on here. The idea that the atmosphere is taking away and adding radiation that should or shouldn't be detected by the sensor, and by definition, that's an error. And that we have these different approaches to correct for it, and that we only have to do those if we're dealing with multiple images. Hopefully this all makes sense, and as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.